from SIDS Trains here, and welcome to episode one of Workbench Wednesdays. So Workbench Wednesdays is a new series I'm doing on the channel. Each Wednesday I'm going to upload a video of me doing work on my workbench. I have my little business of upgrading and repairing model trains, and I want to showcase some of that. So each Wednesday I'm going to be uploading a video of me showing off whatever is on my workbench that week. So this week, I have this Lionel TMCC Santa Fe Northern number 3751 getting a Super Chuffer upgrade to it. The Super Chuffer is a board that is produced and sold by Hennings Trains and uh, John Will Associates. Uh, John Will, or Gunrunner John as some people may know him, uh, produced this board here and this gives engines the ability for rule 17 lighting a uh, cab light that turns off uh, when the engine is in motion and the most popular use for it is smoke at idle and very very good puffing smoke or fan driven smoke uh, that is the most uh, popular use for it and it does a very good job uh, with that feature so as you can see, I have the engine all stripped down uh, to the electronics. I have the shell taken off, and I have some wires that are just hanging uh, hanging around. Uh, these are supposed to be connected to things, uh, but I've prepped this engine for the Super Chuffer. Uh, this is a customer's locomotive. This is not mine. Uh, he had uh, attempted the install of the Super Chuffer, but didn't have very much luck. So he sent, it to, sent this engine to me for me to install the Super Chuffer and get the smoke unit working, the headlight working, and the cab light working uh, with, this, with the Super Chuffer. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video is uh, showcasing the install of the Super Chuffer. Uh, this is, as I said before, a very, very, very popular uh, upgrade to TMCC locomotives and even some legacy engines. Very er early legacy engines can have this uh, upgrade uh, done to it. After about 2008, 2009, uh, Lionel engine started having smoke at idle and better uh, smoke output, so this was not needed anymore. So before we get started, I just want to give you a little uh, background on all the wires that are hanging around. Uh, this is uh, some of the lighting wiring. Uh, this we're not going to be dealing with too much. Uh, the main stuff that we're going to be dealing with is the smoke unit, uh, redoing the wiring for the cab light, the headlight, and then I'm even going to do some a uh, new uh, number board uh, LEDs for it because you don't want uh, the headlight and the cab light to be nest and then the, uh, the number boards have incandescent bulbs. You might as well just upgrade it all. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, to start off, this uh, plug here, you see these wires are hanging, out, hanging around. Uh, this is power. This is uh, the center rail or uh, pickups and then these go to the wheels or the chassis or the outer rails of the track. Uh, same thing with these wires here. These plugs are all over these old TMCC um, motherboards, and they just give um, the TMCC setup multiple um, power pickup connections. Uh, this wire coming out from underneath uh, the motherboard here, this goes to the chuff switch. Uh, I need a wire that connects to the super chuffer for the uh, fan-driven puffing smoke to be in sync with the sound, so I connected a, an additional wire uh, to the chuff switch. And then these two wires here go to uh, the uh, smoking unit switch that is the, on the other side of the motor here. And then finally, there, there is this wire here. This is actually just going to the um, power pickup connections right here. Um, something to, to note is that I'm actually removing a um, factory installed product from this engine. Uh, this originally had a, uh, a smoking unit regulator is what Lionel called it. Uh, this is the Lionel Smart or Semi-Smart Smoke Unit, and it uses it used an AC regulator to regulate power to the heating element, and uh, had uh, some connections to the smoke unit fan motor. I'm removing that because that just complicates things. Uh, the Super Truffer can drive everything and uh, do it a lot better than the Lionel products uh, could. So I did remove that. So if you're looking at this and you're wondering where is the AC regulator that usually was at the front or somewhere near the smoke unit, I removed that so that's not in this uh, scenario anymore. So since I have the 
engine prepped for all the uh, new electronics with the super chuffer here uh, i need wires connected to the super chuffer uh, hennings trains uh, supplies a ribbon cable that has wires to connect all of these pins i personally am not going to be using that ribbon cable i'm going to be using some wire that i already have because i just feel the wire i use is a little better a ribbon cable when you pull it apart there's like this excess plastic that's left on it and i just don't like the look of that it just doesn't seem very professional and overall i've just not had a lot of luck with that wire so i just use my own wire uh, but you can use the wire they supply it will work if needed but personally i'm going to be using a different wire and i do color code the wires usually keeping power red ground black and then uh the other colors uh i just choose depending on the engine uh, things change because some trains have more wires than others on this engine i'm going to be using all the pins on the super chuffer as i'm going to be using all the features that it uh, supplies uh, for the smoke unit and then the cab light and then finally the rule 17 for the headlight so when i'm ready to solder the wires onto uh, the super chuffer or any kind of small electronic uh, board or or an LED or whatever it is, I usually grab my helping hands uh, tool to hold the item so that I don't have to hold it and I can more easily solder wires onto it. So let me uh, solder some wires onto this. So here we go. I got all the wires hooked up to the super chuffer. And when you're doing this, just be patient. Don't uh, rush and don't make it so all the wires are melted and, uh, expo and ex are exposing uh, the copper wire or whatever kind of wire you are using. Uh, don't uh, rush and have that happen because that just won't be good and you could fry your electronics when doing that. But as you see, there are, there are the... Um, the extra wire on the on the other side I'm gonna just take my snips and go along and just snip off uh, the excess uh, wire because you don't want that all sticking out even though I will be wrapping this in some shrink tubing you don't want that uh, sticking out and touching each other so I just go along with my snips and I uh, I remove that because it just gives it a cleaner look and a little more professional and make sure when you're clipping them if there are any uh, sh uh, parts of it that fall off onto the board, make sure to get those off so that you don't fry your electronics. So up next, I have removed the smoke unit from the uh, chassis of the locomotive, and I'm going to be prepping it for the new setup with the super chuffer. Uh, to start out, I had already uh, removed the connector here and the connector over here, as this motor is not going to be connected to this uh, these electronics on top anymore. And I'm only going to be uh, having two wires connected to this. So I just got rid of the connector and, and I'm going to directly solder wires uh, on here for the um, heating element. And speaking of that, I need to remove what I believe is either a 6 ohm or an 8 ohm uh, uh, heating element. These two screws here hold that uh, heating element in. And I need to remove that and redo this uh, the batting in the smoke unit so this thing can uh, uh, smoke well and not... Uh, be anemic with its uh, smoke output. You just want it to uh, be as nice as possible. So you might as well redo it um, while you're doing this. So uh, let me do that. And 
off comes the uh, PCB with the smoke unit. And here is uh, the smoke unit. I believe the uh, customer had uh, already redone this, but I'm just going to take this out as uh, it might not be as good as it needs to be. Or it just uh, I might have a different smoke fluid. Or just in general, I, I always just replace uh, the uh, batting, even if it looks okay. I just like to replace it and make sure that it... Uh, is a, a brand new batting and doesn't have any issues so uh, let me install new batting and with the new batting I just take it and I uh, kind of fluff it up here by pulling it apart and with uh, all the new batting uh, fluffed up I just kind of make it into a ball and I Put it in, uh, well actually that's just, that, this is just a little seal that goes in between the end that can just pop off. But yeah, I just put it into a ball and I shove it down into the, uh, the smoke unit bowl. And you just want to make sure that it's nice and packed in there. And you want to make sure that it doesn't block this uh, air hole here. When I add more smoke fluid, I can press it down some more and make sure that it's not blocking that airway. And speaking of smoke fluid... I'm just going to uh, pre-soak it with some MTH smoke fluid. And I use a decent amount. As you can see, it's changed color. It's a little more uh, soaked. I'm going to add just a little more. But it doesn't quite look like it's soaked enough. There we go. That looks better. And you just want to make it so this, uh, the smoke unit batting is soaked. Uh, isn't dry anymore and just has a uh, nice uh, layer of smoke fluid on it. So with that out of the way, the next thing is installing the new uh, smoke unit element. This is the old element. It's actually kind of crooked on there. So I'm going to remove that because I'm going to be installing a different heating element that can uh, work better with the uh, super chuffer and not uh, burn up over time. And with this one, it's kind of interesting. It's held in by a screw and a nut, so that's just kind of different, but it works, and I'll just remove it here. There we go. The element came off. There's one of the nuts. Uh, here's another one, and uh, I actually have some extra screws laying here, so there's the fourth screw for that. And the other screw, two screws will just pop out, and there we go. Now we just have the bare bone uh, smoking uh, PCB with the motor housing, and now I'm going to be installing a... Uh, a new heating element. So this is the new heating element that I'm going to be installing. This is a 27 ohm uh, heating element from Lionel. Uh, this is the kind of element that can run off of track power and not burn up. Uh, Lionel used these in uh, lots of their older TMCC engines including uh, the early fan driven smoke units that just stayed on constantly. And then, of course, the older puffer styles that were in the Hudsons and pretty much any engine from the 90s had a puff, puffer style smoke unit other than the uh, engines from 1999, such as the Big Boy and Allegheny that had the fan drivers. But this is what I'm going to be installing. And I'm going to be ditching the screws and the nuts and just soldering this uh, directly in as that uh, is just better, in my opinion. So here I've got the smoke unit uh, PCB put into my helping hands and as you see I have the, the element uh, held in and I just have these uh, ends bent up so it can kind of hold itself in. And as I said before I'm going to get rid of these, the uh, screw and nut setup because I feel solder will work better so let me uh, solder this in. So here we go, I got the, the solder put on to the, uh, the two uh, ends of the element here, and it's in there, it's not moving at all. Uh, here's the other side, and a little solder will drip through, but that's good. It just Solder is better at conducting the electricity uh, than the, these screws in the nut, in my opinion. It's just a better solution to uh, the need for conducting the electricity. And then, of course, I'll just take my snips, and I'll snip off the, uh, the excess here. One, 
there's those two and see now I cut them off and I'll take my file to these and then some alcohol and just clean up the surface so it doesn't look as uh, greasy and crummy as it does right now. So now that I got the smoking it all prepped, I'm going to put it back together. I'll start with the, uh, the little seal that goes in between them and then I'll slide the new element down into the bowl and I'm actually going to take my uh, screwdriver and fluff up some of this uh, new batting because it's just better for the uh, smoke unit element to kind of sit up against it because uh, if it doesn't it won't uh, get any smoke float on it but uh, this this is just a technique I use sometimes in some cases the bowl is small enough that where that uh, it kind of sticks up in general but this is a bigger bowl so I need to fluff it up some so now when I take uh, the seal and I set this in here. As you see, it'll touch the the new batting and then a seal up and touch the smoke fluid nicely. And I will now take the screws and put this all back together. So here we are. I have the smoke unit all put back together. And this is ready to go back onto the chassis and be connected to the super chuffer. So here's the chassis uh, with the smoking nib uh, reinstalled, and I have the super chuffer with all the wires here. And now we're going to be going into the actual install of the setup. Uh, before it was kind of just the prep of the wires and the smoking it getting ready. But now we're going to go into installing it, and I'm not going to really show you everything uh, as I go through it. Uh, that would take a long time, and I don't really feel... Uh, that there's a need for that because uh, Henning's Trains uh, does uh, supply a um, decent manual that tells you how to do everything. And I'm just kind of showing you my process of it and how I do it and just kind of the install on this engine in particular. But uh, what, I, what I'm doing will kind of work for any kind of setup. But if you really want to know how to do it and you want to do it and not have anything go wrong, make sure to look at the manual because you always want to uh, see how the install is supposed to go as specified by the manufacturer. So I'm just going to start with the basic connections of power to the super chuffer and the connections to the smoke unit. So here's the super chuffer all hooked up. I have the smoke unit element hooked up. I have the smoke unit motor hooked up. Uh, power is coming to the super chuffer from this black connector here. This orange wire is running to the chuff switch. Uh, underneath all these electronics, I have the smoke unit switch hooked up, and then I also have um, all the wires routed in, in the ways I want them. Obviously, it looks like a mess right now, but when I put it all together, uh, it'll uh, work in the best way possible. I try to route my wires so it makes sense and that they're not crossing each other. Right now, it looks like they are, but I'll organize them once I have everything hooked up and I know it's all working. So uh, let's go test it on the te uh, test track uh, behind the camera. So now I have the engine on my test blocks uh, so I can run the engine in place. So let me turn on the engine. Get the element heated up a little. There we go. So we got the element on. So let me uh, start moving the engine. Look at that. We got puffing smoke and we got smoke at standstill. That's something this engine didn't have before and this just looks great. And it puffs with the chuff. This engine has two chuffs per evolution so it chuffs at uh, 12 and 6. Stop the engine. It turns back on. And if I go in reverse, and it comes back on. So this looks great. And now I'm going to uh, move on to tidying up some of the wires and connecting the headlight and the cab light. So I've gotten a lot of work done now. I have the super chuffer under all these wires here. I have them all zip tied together and organized in a nice fashion. I have these wires over here running to the LED headlight that I hooked up and these wires running to the LED cab light I hooked up. 
These go to the marker lights at the front. And the only thing that I have left to do is to change the number boards to LEDs. But I'm going to do that at another time before I send it back to the customer. But for now, let me put the shell back on to uh, the engine and let's see how it runs. So here we have the engine on my test blocks again. I have the shell back on and everything is uh, looking good so far. Obviously, I haven't hooked up the number boards uh, with LEDs yet, so they are off. But the marker lights are on, the headlight is on, and the cab light is on. So let me start the engine up and uh, we'll see the smoke kick on. there we go we got our smoke at idle and if I put the engine to one speed step you'll see the headlight get brighter we got the puffing smoke and if you notice the cab light turned off and as I bring it down speed steps to zero, smoke stops, cab light comes back on, and the headlight dims. So we got our Rule 17 lighting for the headlight, the cab light's working, and of course that amazing smoke feature at idle, and the puffing when the engine is moving. So uh, I consider this a, a successful upgrade. Uh, all I have left to do is the number boards, as I said, and after that, this engine is ready to go back to the customer. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, Workbench Wednesdays. And as always, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid, and I'll see you next time, guys. Dispatch, Santa Fe 3751 here. We are in transit. Over.